Hello and welcome to News Round, a recap of stories in the week. I'm Jocka Rogers. The headlines. President Mohamed Buhari tasks military to up their game in the fight against insurgency in the Northeast as different stakeholders call for a better approach to fighting banditry in northwestern states. Citizen data now to be used as a tool to fight insecurity as committee presents reports to the president. Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Gbajabia Mila calls for a cut in the cost of governance in the country. And Russia announces approval for a COVID-19 vaccine after less than two months of human testing. the issues of security well several issues uh, concerning uh, this came up uh, during the week and one was which uh, issues of kidnapping and banditry in the northwest region where states are calling for a more concerted effort to combat the hydra-headed monster here are the details the northwest region of the country which has states like kaduna kanu and zamfara has also been under siege this time Traditional rulers have been tasked to take steps to bring about peace and stability in their domains in the face of the security challenges. This is coming from the governor of Zamfara State, Belo Matawale, where they received the Emir of Kanu, Aminu Adubairo, at the government house in Gusau, the state capital. The normal issue that we have at hand is insecurity, and uh, by the cooperation with the traditional institution, we can be able to curtail the issue of insecurity, not in Zamfara, in Nigeria. The Emir of Kanu, Aminu Adobayero, is also keen on seeing the area return to safety. The traditional rulers have always been there, and I don't think there will never there will be a time when they won't be there. Uh, they always. Uh, assist in their own directions right from the ward heads to the village heads and to the district heads to the emirs. This is the channel that has been in existence for, for many decades and they use that for security and other things in the state and the country at large. And in Katsina state where the bandits are also leaving destruction in their trail, the state governor visits the newly established Special Army Super Camp 4 located in Faskari local government area. Governor Masari appealed to the Nigerian army to do more in the ongoing fight against banditry. The fight against bandits and banditry is not, is not yet over. We believe more efforts will have to be done in order to address First of all, crush the bandits now. And in Kaduna State, the killings and attacks in the southern parts remain a cause for concern. The primate of the Anglican Communion, Most Reverend Henry Ndukuba, visited the state governor to look at this matter. We want to uh, assure you of our prayers for the state and also trusting God to intervene in this hydra-headed issue uh, so that by the grace of God, solution will be found and the culprits will be brought to book. And while that's going on, the Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria says the administration of justice is the only way peace can return to southern Kaduna and it will serve as a deterrent to conflict merchants. This unfortunate situation would have been avoided had it been the past Kaduna State administrations had taken the right steps taken by the current administration in implementing the recommendations of successive white papers. However, the only way peace could be achieved in any case is through the administration of justice. Governor Nasir al Rufai lamented that religion, which should have been a uniting factor for the people in Kaduna State, has instead been used as a dividing tool. He asked the people to pray that God will bring sudden conflict to an end. Your visit here is an indication 
of your recognition of the positive role that religion can play to unite our people. This has been the overriding objective of this state government. The, the primate is aware of the history of violence and religious intolerance in this state. There are many who believe that there is a need for the government to consider implementing the recommendations of the Piles of Kibo Committee report on the 1992 Zango Kataf crisis. They believe this will bring an end to the issues in southern Kaduna. Well, authorities may have shared suggestions on how to tackle security in the northwest region, but the southern parts of Kaduna got some attention from military authorities with the deployment of a special tactical team to restore order. This decision comes on the heels of recent attacks on villages and settlements by gunmen who are now said to be on the run. The rise in insecurity in the northern region continues to take its toll on a large number of citizens, with insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, cattle rustling and other forms of criminality still being tackled. Sadly, one part that seems to be experiencing this new wave of devastating attacks is southern Kaduna, which is fast becoming a hot spot of isolated killings by bandits in the northwest. At a news conference in Abuja, the coordinator of defense media operations, Major General John Eneche, says the military will deploy special forces to the various flashpoints in southern Kaduna to curb the attacks. Special operations forces have been deployed to the joint operations area covering the various flashpoints. This move is expected to achieve the desired result with the provision of credible and actionable intelligence, specifically from the primary sources. A good piece of information, you may say, but then the question of adequate security lingers. How safe is the civilian population from the evils of criminals, especially insurgents, going forward? The coordinator insists that actions are in place to deal with this challenge. The armed forces of Nigeria and all the relevant security agencies is leaving nothing to chance. Consequently, actions already in place in this regard are being reviewed to handle this all-important intelligence appropriately. As the days go by, the nation will be watching closely to see how the military will put an end to the activities of bandits in southern Kaduna, a task that surely must be done to restore peace for its residents now and into the future. Well, President Mohamedou Buhari seems to be taking head on the issue of national security as he has tasked the Nigerian military to do better in the war against insurgency in the Northeast. The president gave the orders at a meeting he convened with security chiefs and governors of the Northeast in Abuja. Speaking to state house correspondents after the meeting, Governor Babagana Zulum of Bono State says winning the war on insurgency in the Northeast will require the joint efforts of governments at all levels. Our next report takes a look at the meetings. For many, the insurgency in northeast Nigeria is just a case of the chickens coming home to roost. The constant onslaught by insurgents has left the trail of death and destruction in a region which in 2011 accounted for 13.5% of the country's population and a third of its landmass. This calamity has been a thorn in the flesh of successive governments since the bombs first went off in July of 2009. In the eye of the storm right now is the governor of Borno State, Professor Babagana Zulum, the third governor to deal with insurgency in the state worst hit by the terrorists. His convoy was attacked on July the 29th, 2020, around the Baga area, causing a back and forth between the governor and the military as to who orchestrated the ambush. Now there is need for a common front in the Northeast, and Governor Zulum is chairman of the Northeast Governors Forum. The forum commends the effort of the federal government of Nigeria 
in fighting the insurgency. However, the armed forces should intensify effort to secure hard to reach areas in the region and ensure safe access to farmlands. Next stop for the governors is a meeting with the president and all the security chiefs in the country. An important gathering buttressing what President Mohammed Buhari describes as priority, the nation's security. I assure you, uh, northeast governors, especially the governor of Borno, that uh, we go to bed and we wake up thinking about you and how to secure our country because that is the fundamental responsibility of a government, security. The general report I'm getting, other than the conventional one from the intelligence sources, is that the army should do better. And this is the truth. When it comes to insurgency, it's never as simple as just fighting the terrorists. It is a hydra-headed problem, and the Borno State Governor believes there are remote problems that need to be solved in the region. People need to go back to their farmlands. People need to be resettled in their original homes so that they can start their means of livelihood. This is one of the reasons why uh, the insurgency, insurgents are recruiting more into the sex. With the security issue not going away, the president for the second day met parties involved in the sector, and these included members of the Nigeria Governors Forum Security Council, the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the National Security Advisor, the Chief of Staff, Service Chiefs and Heads of other security agencies at the Presidential Villa in Abuja, while some other stakeholders joined virtually. Away from the Presidency, the Northeast returns to focus at this meeting as the Governor of Borono State visits the Chief of the Air Staff in Abuja. After being received by his host, the governor makes a case for a military takeover of the shores of Lake Chad in addition to an appeal for the federal government to address the root cause of insurgency. Our main request is for the Nigerian military to take over the shores of the Lake Chad. We have identified some key areas in the shores of the Lake Chad areas in Marcia local government, in Kukawa local government, in Guzamara local government, in Abadama local government, Bama local government, and to some certain extent, the Sambisa region, Tikwa, Mapa, among others. The governor of Gombe State in an earlier visit to the Air Force chief offers to partner with the Nigerian Air Force in a bid to fast track the total decimation of insurgents. Very day, the request got to us, we allocated 230 hectares of land, <laughs> which you may rarely find in some other states. But at least for us, even today, we are ready to receive you, to give you a place to start work, and we shall be cooperating with you over time so that uh, you will attend this very good and noble objective in order to secure our people. Without mincing words, the Chief of the Air Staff assures both governors of the Air Force preparedness to collaborate with other security agencies in ending the menace of insurgency. I want to also assure you, and by extension assure the people of the Northeast, that the Nigerian Air Force working with other security agencies will continue to do everything humanly possible to ensure that the Northeast is secured, not only the Northeast, but indeed the entire country. If these efforts geared at resolving this long-standing security challenge in the Northeast are backed by action, it may not be long before the residents of the Northeast begin to sleep with both eyes closed. And when News Round returns, we'll take a look at some other stories. Russia announces approval for a COVID-19 vaccine. That's in a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Our website, channelcv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. 
or download the Channel CV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and Roku. And when you get the Channel CV or Channel 24 apps, you can catch up with news updates on the go, plus the eyewitness feature designed for you to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Install the apps, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. We're still talking about security on News Round and it's the challenge of data management which is needed as a part of tools to keep citizens' identities intact that we're talking about now. A citizen on a committee on citizen data management and harmonization, which presented its report to the president this week, seemed to have scaled one of the requirements listed by the American government, which led to the immigrant visa restrictions. In Nigeria's 60-year history, the country has never been able to boast of a viable robust database of its citizens, one that is accessible to all and can help monitor criminals, migration, deaths, births, marriages, divorces, DNA, etc. In January of 2020, the United States placed visa restrictions on Nigeria, citing six areas of concern. The country, along with six other countries, was accused of failing to meet U.S. security and information sharing standards for border and immigration screening and vetting. Not long after this, in early February, an 18-man committee on citizen data management and harmonization was established, chaired by the Minister of Interior, Mr. Rauf Arigbeshola. And now, six months later, at the council chambers of the State House in Abuja, the report of the committee is presented to President Muhammadu Buhari. I'm delighted that this progress, especially the uploading of lost and stolen passport and travel documents, has been acknowledged by the United States government. Addressing State House correspondents afterwards, the chairman of the committee is confident the recommendations of the committee will address these concerns by the American government. As a matter of fact, four of the Areas of concern have been solved, have been overcome. The two remaining, I will not give you specific description because they are security, they are, they are quite, uh, they are classified. They are related to security. And to solve that problem is the reason for creating now a national criminal information system and data bank for DNA. All data from other data collection agencies are to be harmonized yes. into one portal to be managed by the National Identity Management Commission. All the other government agencies too, they have their own database, but it is linked with the national identification number as the example that was stated. If you go for, uh, for passport or driver's license, they will ask you for your national or marriage or whatever it is, so <laughs> everything else. So even police will not ask you for ID card, it will ask you for the number, the digital number, you, and he has a way to verify that, that number. That is what we are, we are focusing on. The report states that this data harmonization must be completed by the 30th of June, 2021, and INEC has till December the 31st, 2020, to ensure all registered voters have a national identification number. For the identity of Nigerians to be effectively collated and managed, the committee is recommending that a special intervention fund be set up worth 71.12 billion naira. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. Cut the cost of governance, improve internal revenue generation and collection so the funds can be deployed to initiatives that will impact the citizenry. Well, that's the charge from the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, at the commencement of the medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper revenue considerations headed by the House of... Uh, or, yeah, which was convened by the House of Representatives Committee on Finance. The House of Representatives Committee on Finance has invited revenue-generating agencies for a five-day interaction 
on the 2021 to 2023 Medium Term Expenditure Framework MTEF and Fiscal Strategy Paper FSP. Revenue generation for the country may seem even more difficult now, considering the COVID-19 pandemic that has negatively affected the economy of the country and the drop in oil prices. This is why the chairman of the committee believes non-oil revenue generating agencies of government have a huge role to play in funding the budgets. The following agencies will limit their expenditures to 60% of revenue. MPA, NEMASA, NCC, NIPOST, NDIC, Nigeria Export Processing Zone Authority, CBN, CAC, Shippers Council, National Inland Waterways Authority, National Insurance Commission, Raw Materials Research Development Council, Federal Mortgage of Nigeria, National Development uh, Sugar Council, and of course, all the parasitas under the aviation. For the Speaker of the House of Representatives, government agencies underperforming will no longer be tolerated. We need impose deep cuts in the cost of governance and improve internal revenue generation and collection. We have credible reports that these desperately needed funds have in many cases been diverted to finance unnecessary trivialities. At the same time, the government is left scrambling for alternative sources to fund priority projects. We cannot afford this dynamic and we will not tolerate it anymore. The interactions continue with the budget office responding to proposed revenue generation by the different MDAs. I was pleasantly surprised to hear NCAA talk about them proposing that they will generate 41.733 um, billion and they will spend 1.73 plus basically they will spend everything leaving a net negative of 262,000 naira. For us it's not acceptable. We, we are not even going to question and answer session. Madam, please. No, no, no. no. For me, I think it, I will take it as, this committee will take it as a typographic error. Over the next four days of the hearing, revenue generating agencies of government are expected to make presentations to the committee on expected remittances from them by the budget office. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. This round winds down in Russia as President Vladimir Putin has announced that it's the first country in the world to grant regulatory approval to a COVID-19 vaccine after less than two months of human testing, a move held by Moscow as evidence of its scientific prowess. Although the vaccine is yet to complete their final trials, raising concerns among some experts at the speed of its approval, the World Health Organization says it's ready already in discussions with Russian health authorities on the process for possible pre-qualification. To say that we are in a close contact with the Russian health authorities and discussions are ongoing with respect to possible WHO pre-qualification of the vaccine. But again, pre-qualification of any vaccine includes the rigorous review and assessment of all required safety and efficacy data. And we are encouraged by the, by the, by the, by the speed by which uh, 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 several candidate vaccines uh, have been uh, have been uh, uh, developing, and and as we have been uh, always saying, we hope that uh, some of these vaccines will uh, prove to be safe and efficient, uh, and that through the uh, through the uh, this mechanism that I just talked about, we will be able to uh, to get uh, uh, to get uh, 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 doses uh, that will be then distributed in an in a equal way and maybe to look into like uh, what, uh, how this distribution would go, what would be some prioritization uh, and, 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 and similar, similar things. Thank you. Well, those are the stories that made headlines this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers.